I never forget when we had a long mat with, filled with boost foam and sitting next to a normal conventional EVA and people just ran on EVA first and then on boost and the only thing that they all made, they all smiled like you immediately, now they simply smile. With the introduction of the Boost Light material, we've managed to travel here to beautiful Germany and to the Adidas headquarters to dive down deeper into the archives and see the difference between the old Boost and the new Boost Light. So, come with me. This is the, the one million dollar question. How many pallets do you think we need for a size UK midsole? Uh, I'll make it short. Roughly two and a half thousand to fill a an, an eight and a half midsole. When the first boost was launched in 2013 in New York and Litke presented it to the, to the world with Gerd Manns, we knew we've had a game changer. I, I never forget when we had a long mat with, filled with boost foam and sitting next to a normal conventional EVA and people just ran on EVA first and then on boost and the only thing that they all made, they all smiled like you immediately, now they simply smiled. And we, we let them describe how they felt. And yes, I, what can I say about that first product? It, it was a game changer for us. It was a big breakthrough, especially on the women's side. On the other hand, even though maybe probably four or eight out of 10 runners loved the material, there was one or two that didn't come along too well. And I want to be upfront honest, probably that kind of deflection that you had inside Boost was something people were not used to. To sum that shoe up, with its kind of tight tech fit. It was probably a bit almost too tight, too narrow. When the Ultra Boost was launched, that I think was the big breakthrough for us because we were really able to, to feature PrimeNet at its best. Uh, the way also the three stripes were executed were amazing. This external heel counter, a lot of detailed, more boost of course, yeah. And I think also part of the game changer was that we perforate, that's normal, it's just normal. <laughs> We forgot Believe it, whenever I gave a parts. training on Boost 10 years ago, <laughs> I left the worst mess ever and they never invited me again. I, I'm not surprised why. But these perforated outsole probably released even more energy of Boost. And yes, it, it was something that was unique in the world from the performance standpoint. It didn't change the characteristics within different temperatures. It stayed the same quality. The shoe fell apart after 2000 kilometers. Boost didn't. And there was just amazing, but I think even nicer was the moment in 2014 in September when Felix Kemeto lined up at, well, there was other victories already at the Tokyo Marathon, but when this crazy man was the first runner ever to beat the famous 203 in a marathon, when Dennis used that Adi Zero shoe, it was just amazing, but it was just everything you needed. This low profile boost material, a very grippy, continental rubber, especially in the forefoot to really ensure the grip. Perfect conditions on the race and that, that was it. Yeah. Two or two, what did someone say? Oh, I still can run a two or 257, just I'm finish up a half marathon, not a full marathon. <laughs> we have what we call a performance boost, where we really knew how to fuse it, how to make it, but there is a different version, for example, that we use. I think I've placed it here. Um, not, not to say, it's a more affordable way, but it's for comfort reasons. On the NMD, on originals, we use it in a slightly different composite. Because there you don't have this high impact and this kind of performance characteristics. People that did not want to feel the entire feeling of boost like you felt on the Ultra Boost. For example, me coming from trail running, I often loved the way how we did it, for example, in outdoor running shoes or trail running shoes where we added a kind of foot frame, a firmer frame to give more stability. You took the benefit of boost a little bit out towards more stability, toward more foot guidance. And I think you know, maybe it's the right time to pass on to you what you have done for the later generation, especially what has been out in the market now with the Ultra um, Boost that was out last year and what, what you guys do now with the Ultra Boost Lite. And I think it's fair to say without Boost, without Ultra Boost, we would not have been in running where we are today. But have we achieved 100% or did we get 100% fans? I'm not sure. Hopefully. Yes. Yeah. No, I think the, the evolution of Ultra Boost is, it's gone from, well, it's gone from Boost. You know, when it's coming towards 10 years of Boost. 
on energy boost and into ultra boost and ultra boost has very very quickly become not just a running icon but a brand icon you know if yeah. we talk about certain shoes within the brand yeah. stan smith superstar ultra boost is alongside that so from a running point of view we know where it's come from we know where it's been in terms of breaking records and we are very very keen to make sure that we keep boosting this performance world and we keep ultra boost spinning in the performance world as well that's one of the most important things for us from a running creation team point of view there's absolutely nothing else that goes into building one of these shoes than ultimate performance. Land with boost, transition with boost, toe off with boost and LEP was the idea and the continued idea behind this model. What we wanted to do is really make sure that we land ultra boost light as a true performance technology. So when we sit down or when the team sat down to look at what would make this a true performance running shoe, it doesn't start with how do we make ultra boost better, it starts with what makes a running shoe good. You know, it's gotta be fit, it's gotta fit well, it's got to have a nice balance of cushioning, responsiveness, but it's also got to be lightweight. And we know, and what's been leveled at us over the years, is that Boost maybe hasn't been the lightest compound we've ever used in a running shoe. On a low-profile shoe like the Racer over here, perfect. But we know the world moves into a higher stack. People want more cushioning under their heel. They want more deformation. So we really have to make sure that with the amount of Boost we want underfoot, it has to be light. So taking a lot of the key ingredients of what makes an Ultra Boost an Ultra Boost, i.e. key iconic elements, heel counter, cage, they continue, Prime Knit Plus, making sure we have an adaptive fit. Again, it's an evolution, right, of where we've been in the past. We're not trying to rip something up and start again because this was a phenomenal running shoe and this is as well. But what we do with this new Boost compound is take it into a whole new level. So Light Boost that's on Ultra Boost Light Compound for compound is 30% lighter than the performance boost that Udo just mentioned. That's just by changing base formula, so 30% lighter. So already we start to speak to runners that either read stats, but people pick it up, people order it online, they get it out of the box at home. What is that first, second moment of truth? Well, it's usually a shoe in hand, how does it feel? Well, it feels incredibly light. Then they put it on the foot, they start to run, it feels lighter still. What we also make sure we do with this shoe is start to just evolve and adapt a few of the elements that we have, again, to, through a continuation evolution perspective. So LEP, if I hold up this shoe, you see that there is something underneath and it's doing something kind of similar, but in a very different way. So on Ultra Boost Lite, we deconnect in the midfoot. Torsion ability and torsion isn't something with a high stack necessarily we needed to consider, consider too much, but then we wanted to make sure it was connected in the forefoot to really ramp up that toe off. That sort of energy return that we've talked about for years with Boost, we're really making sure we maximize it through transition and toe off. Also from an upper point of view, obviously I mentioned the heel counter, but here really extending the heel counter, locking down. This is almost like an iceberg. So what you see on top of the shoe is replicated in the shoe as well. So your heel is nice and locked down. In fact, your heel in this shoe will sit probably about there. So from a lockdown and support point of view, a lot of runners in this shoe might heel strike. Even if you don't think you heel strike, at some point within your run and in your race, you're gonna get tired, so you will. So you're nice and locked down. The midfoot cage, again, we continue to evolve because this is a key identifier of this franchise. First and foremost, I want people to recognize that someone's got an ultra boost on their foot. Well, firstly, Adidas, second Adidas running, there maybe then third ultra boost, but nonetheless, they're all tied and they're all synchronized together. But here we use a slightly different compound and different TPU, so it's slightly more flexible. It's a bit more supple, again, I've spent hours watching YouTube reviews and reading reviews online. Some good, some bad. But we know with this cage, we had to make it feel less obtrusive. And after you've worn it for a certain amount of time, reduce the pressure points, especially in flex fold areas. You know, if someone's going to be putting in long distances, we need to make sure that in the flex fold areas, it's not going to cause irritation on the foot. So we use a slightly different TPU just to lighten that up a little bit as well. And all the same time, we make these elements lighter. And as I mentioned, the Prime Knit Plus is a evolved version of Prime Up, but really maximizing that adaptability, breathability in the forefoot. So the good news is that we make it lighter, the energy return is very much on par with where we've been. This was already in an incredible space and yeah. this is the same level, but just lighter. Yeah. So essentially thinking about what makes the runner go better, that that way. Um, to Udo's point, Prime Knit is purposely built now and forged in a way that allows expansion. You know, foot shape, shape, foot shape change over time and distance is your foot gets high, expands, it contracts, but it means that the knit can now move a little better with your foot and constrict with it. Whereas, you know, back to some of the comments my have leveled at this, after a while, maybe your foot sloshes over the top of the tool and we wanted to make sure that's not the case here. The other super cool thing about this shoe before I shut up and leave you all to go around the archive is 
Sustainability is a part of the brand that we take very seriously. Ultra Boost has been a leader in that, in terms of what we try to push. So the upper of this shoe is more than 50% using recycled materials, as you'd expect from a knitted upper. We now have recycled components as well, or part recycled components. But this shoe versus the UB22 is 10% reduced carbon footprint. So as a sustainability story, as a traceability story in the way that we want to speak about not just running, but our brand to consumers through a sustainable lens, we start to really produce high-end performance product, but lower carbon footprint. And that includes everything. That includes material selection, the amount of material you use, the way that we produce in factories, the way that we ship, to even the point of a consumer opening a box, you know, box, tissue paper, everything. So that whole end-to-end -end process is 10% reduced. So if you ask me, 10% is a good start. It's obviously not, not enough, but still, I think it's moving in an incredible direction. So that was a, a whistle-stop tour of Ultra Boost Light.